sending email is a fundamental feature that's required by almost every app. Today I'm going to show you how to combine the powers of SendGrid and Firebase Cloud Functions to send transactional email to your customers. It works like this. A new document is created in Firestore. That triggers a cloud function. The cloud function then makes an API call to SendGrid, and SendGrid sends the emails to your users. In this video, we're going to use a Firestore database trigger, but you can also trigger the function over HTTP, and I already wrote the code for that, which is at angularfirebase.com. If you're just finding me for the first time, make sure to subscribe, and then head over to SendGrid to sign up for a free account. It's free if you send less than 100 emails per day, and then after that, you pay based on volume. From there, you'll need to initialize Firebase functions in your project. I'm going to be working in the context of an Angular 5 app, but this code will work for any Firebase-enabled project. From there, you can cd into the functions directory, then we'll install SendGrid's Node.js library. SendGrid has several other packages for Node, but the mail package should handle 90% of your use cases. If we go into package.json, it should look something like this. We have SendGrid mail, and then I also have cores installed for HTTP, but we're not going to cover that in this video. But check out the link in the description if you need the HTTP version of this cloud function. From there, you'll want to go into your SendGrid account and create a new API key. Keep in mind this is a sensitive API key, so don't expose it in your front-end code or any other public-facing application. Then you'll set it to your functions environment by calling Firebase functions config set sendgrid key with your corresponding API key. Now before we write the cloud function, I want to show you how I manage transactional templates in sendgrid. A template holds all the default HTML and styles associated with an email, and then we can pass it dynamic data from our cloud function to display specific user information inside of the email. In this demo, we're going to send an email to the user every time they receive a new follower. SendGrid has a drag and drop editor that makes editing your templates very easy. Managing email, HTML, and CSS can often be very frustrating, but the editor can significantly increase your productivity. For example, if we want to add an image to our email, we can simply drag and drop that from the saved images on our SendGrid account. That allows you to provide consistent branding and reusable components across all of your emails. The most important thing I want to look at is how we pass dynamic data to our email template. First, look at the name with the double curly brackets. That's going to be our custom dynamic data that we send from the cloud function. You can add as much custom data with this syntax to your email as you want. Then SendGrid has a few built-in variables, for example the body which is wrapped here in the percent sign. It might be easier to use the body tag if you're generating all of your email content on the server. At this point we can save the template and then make a note of the ID. Now we can switch back to our Firebase Cloud Function code, and the first thing we'll do is import the admin database, and then we're going to set our SendGrid API key by calling functions config SendGrid key. Then we can initialize the SendGrid client by importing it and then calling sgmail set API key. I'm going to give our Cloud Function a name of Firestore Email, and it's going to be triggered whenever a user gets a new follower, and a follower is a document that's nested under the main user document. It's a somewhat contrived example, but I just want to show you how to trigger the actual email sending process. When that event happens, we want to send an email to the user who received the follower. The first thing I'm doing is setting the user ID as a variable, and then I'm going to make a reference to the Firestore database. From there, I query the user's document by calling dbcollectionUsers with that corresponding user ID, and then we call git to receive the snapshot, and then with that document, we get the actual data on the document by calling doc data. Now the message object is what we actually send to SendGrid, so this has to be formatted in a specific way. It needs to have a to email, which will be the user's email from this document, and then it'll be from angularfirebase.com. The subject will be a new follower, but you can also set that on the template itself. Then you use the email template by setting the template ID property with that ID that we copied in the previous step. You can use your own custom templating syntax by adding them to substitution wrappers. I'm just sticking with the double curly brackets like they would work in an Angular app. Then the substitutions object will contain all your custom dynamic data. We're just adding the user's display name, but you could also add things like their follower count or any other relevant information to this email. Sending the email is easy as calling sgmail send with this message object. That's going to return a promise, so we'll go ahead and console log message sent or console log the error if an error happened to occur here. And that's all it takes. Now we just have to deploy the function and then we'll verify that it works by creating a new document in Firestore. Going into Firestore, I'm here on the user's collection and then under my user account. 
Then I'm going to nest a followers collection under it and then add a document to it. It doesn't matter what's inside this document, I'm just going to add a field that says hello world. Clicking create should invoke the function and we should see an email in our inbox. Before I do that, I'm going to go over to the cloud function logs and make sure that we don't have any errors. We see email sent in the function logs, meaning that SendGrid did send a successful response back to the function. Keep in mind that you need to have billing enabled in Firebase to send outside API calls. So if you have any errors at this point, make sure to double check that. If I go to my Gmail account, I see I get the email here from angularfirebase.com via sendgrid.net, and my name is interpolated where the curly brackets were. That's it for Firebase Cloud Functions with SendGrid. If this video helped you, please like and subscribe. And if you want to learn more advanced techniques with transactional email, consider becoming a pro member at angularfirebase.com. You'll get a free copy of my book, exclusive content, and one-on-one -on -one project consulting. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.